Right, my name's James Butler. I am 18 years old. I came into care when I was five years old I'm, and I am currently doing my A-levels at Cannock Chase High School. Well, when I was five, I, um, I don't really remember um, a lot about coming into care. I think it was a, quite a fast and fluid moment. I don't really remember talking to anyone. I, I think I was at my grandma's when I got picked up to come to my foster placement where I am now. It's, it's quite quick, if you ask me. It's like really fast, fluent and just... I, I actually fell asleep in the car, actually, because I was only young um, when I was coming up into my placement. And then I woke up, seen a house and got in there and stopped there since... Well, since I've been there, so yeah. Um, I think my foster placement was so right, just due to the fact, because I think the council just put me with the right carer straight from the start. I think, I think it all comes down to the carer as such. I think, it, I think you have to have a good relationship with the carer, um, especially from a young age. Um, you have to have that instant click or else grow, growing up it may not be a pleasant experience. Like to some people it may not be, but to me it was an instant click and I really enjoyed where I have been since. I think, I think that's partly down to the carer, but partly down to the council as well, so yeah. I think one of I think some low points have been like say when I've been asked to be introduced to my parents as such because obviously I haven't I haven't seen my mom since like since I've been come into care I've recently started seeing my dad again but I think being asked do you want to I think that was like okay this is quite a serious turning point now do I actually want to see these people again or do or not, you know what I mean? So I actually chose the decision not to see my mum just because my sister took the turn to see any or didn't really go to plan. But um, I think there, uh, there hasn't really been much low points, but I think if you want to say a low point, I think that's going to be a low point as such. And like say where I, when I get told like when my grandma passed away, um, obviously because that's who I used to live with before I used to come, that's quite okay, that's quite I think they're the low points, but there's always been my carer to go to if I need to, and in school if I need to, and such. So yeah, it's very important being with my sister, um, coming into care with her because she's helped me through my low times, she's helped me through my high times, and it's the same vice versa as well. I've helped her through her low times, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I think at the time I didn't think it was that important, but now as she's gone, because she's moved out and such, it's um, it's. Being a parent that I actually needed her more than I actually, um, basically it's a normal sister-brother relationship. You don't want her there when she's there and then when she's not there, you want her. It's that sort of thing, so yeah. Well, it's, it was important that my carer had these certain qualities because she's helped me um, grow up as a, like, a, into an adult as such and her qualities and traces have come on to me as such. Like when I first went in, she had like, um, she was positive not negative at all, she was just enthusiastic about everything, you know what I mean, and just just looked on the bright side of life, you know what I mean, and just helped you come through it into a nice, it's like going from and your family into a foster family, she made that into like making her, I'm her family, you know what I mean, as such, so it's that, as easy as that. It, was, it helped me a lot going into a big family because everyone was around me, like it was also being very positive and helping me, welcoming, welcoming me into the family, it was just, a big happy family really, a nice warm family um, and not only that, like when I got there we decided to get a house, a new house pet, a pet called Peggy, my dog, she's now 12 so I've grown up with her as well and I've got a nice strong connection with the dog. Um, so yeah, it's just a nice big happy family and warmly. In school, I, I've I, when I first went in, I was in this like um, foster carers um, help program, which helped you go through school. And if you needed the extra support, then they, as a, like a designated teacher would be there to help you go through your lessons, and there'd be a support teacher in your lessons as such. Um, they was very helpful. But when I was like when I went into say year nine, I think I think I because I was doing so well at school, I actually dropped the teacher went away, I didn't need them anymore and I was doing well on my own. I think being in care through school hasn't really affected it as much as just being gone into school because I know some, te I know some um, placements, they've moved around quite a lot in like different schools and it's quite hard to make friends and stay positive about the experience but I think being at the same school through 
obviously throughout it all. It's been quite easy. Everyone knows, I mean, foster care, all my teachers know. It's, n it's nothing to hide, really. It's just been, it's nothing to hide. It's just been exciting, really. It's just been like a normal school life. <laughs> my friends and peers around me, when I first knew I was in foster care, there was a bit touchy at first. I was like, okay, I'm not meant to say these things, like jokes and that, and okay, okay. But then, as I knew that I wasn't really that bothered that I was in care and it didn't really affect me as much, I think they're just like, they, they don't even talk about it, they just know and it's there and if they want to talk about it and I'm more than happy talking about it, you know what I mean? But most of them know, so it's nothing, nothing to hide from them and they don't really care really. I don't think there's, I think school trips and that, I don't think there's been much different approvals or such, I think it's just been the same as, I know, I think the most weirdest thing is that when people like say parent and guardian and it has to be the guardian I think that's the only different thing towards it but going away didn't really affect me as such like going on to the school trips I mean I've personally organised loads of school trips with the school myself like to Alton Towers to theme parks and all that as I do so it hasn't been much of a different step towards school trips and that so yeah. My main hobby includes magic I've been doing it since I was like since quite young I've been into it I haven't been performing it since I like I've been performing since like 10-ish, like and it's stuck, me for, f stuck with me since then. Um, and then my, f my carer and that, like, we had a leaflet come through the post saying um, we do talent contests for the Children's Voice Project put on. F um, and I've been going to the um, Reach for the Stars quite a few times, seeing all these talent contests going on, and I thought, oh, actually, I fancy that. But I, I haven't really had the confidence to go up onto the stage and perform in front of so many different people because it's quite scary, and, um, but then my carer was like, come on, you can do it, come on, I'll take it out, I'll bring you back, you know what I mean, and she helped me with the confidence to go up on stage and perform, and I did, and it was really good, and it helped me improve my magic in so many different ways, like take it from close up to stage, it's like quite inspirational really, because one of my main inspirations, or oh, characters, is Darren Brown, who's a massive stage performer, so yeah, it's help me in a lot of ways. I think it's very important that young people get in, get um, in contact with different activities going on around the, with the council because I think that their voice needs to also be heard as well as just the carers and just speaking to the carers or the social workers because sometimes words can get twisted and it's not coming direct from the young person. Well, I've had so many different social workers. I think I've had about 10 different ones. I mean, to be fair, it's been quite fun, but it's been quite sad at times as well because you actually do grow to a certain social worker as more than any other as such. I mean, when I first, the first one I had was like come from Scotland, I think, and she was like one of the most friendliest people you could ever meet. And then she had to go or go onto a different team. And I've just recently gone to another one who has also just left and gone to another team. And it's quite sad to see them go because you grow to that certain person. But it's also when you get a new one, you're like, oh, okay, there's a new person, okay, I need to try and grow to them. So that, that's the hard point to it all, is trying to grow to a different person. But it's funny because they're really nice people as well and you do grow to them as such. So it's been good in that sense. I've had so many different social workers. It's been quite challenging, but also quite exciting as well because each and every one of them, I've had different qualities about them. Um, some of my favourite ones have been literally the ones who just come for a chat because they know, say, how good I have been in my placements um, because they've been with me quite a while, some of them have. Um, some of them just literally come for a cup of tea and a chat and just do what they have to do. It's literally just tick a few boxes. He's doing well, he's doing well, you know what I mean, as such. It's been literally as simple as that. And that what stands out to me in a good social worker, they come for a chat and not just a serious talk, you know what I mean, like, are you doing this or you shouldn't be doing that. You know what I mean, they let me talk to them and they respond back in the way I want them to, you know what I mean? It's more of a relaxed feeling than just sitting up and going, OK, well, I need to do this, as such. So that's what I see in a good social worker. All the good social workers have been chirpy and been very interactive with you, with the young people or with me, as such, in this one. They've been very interactive and been very chatty and they're there for, as a guidance and to care about you. Not just like, I've had like a few social workers as well who are just not as such bad, but they're not, I haven't really stuck to them as much as the other ones just because they're there. I think, I think they're there just to do a job and just tick the boxes. 
And I don't think that's a very good trait in a social worker. I think they should be there to come and talk to you, get to know you, but also do the job as such and help you as a guidance through the care process. I'm 18 now um, and obviously I'm out of care. I'm on my own basically and um, I, was, I need to start looking at the future. Um, I'm going to be staying with my foster placement up until like until I actually move out physically. So I'll be doing all the normal sort of pain board and all that. Um, but I need to look out my future and obviously I'm an entertainer of sorts. So I've been looking at going into Butlins and that and they actually provide on-site accommodation if you work there full time. So that could be a step forward. I'm also looking about applying for college and doing a drama degree there and such. And um, so yeah. It's been, it's going to be quite challenging of where I'm going to be going, but I'm, I'm sort of on track and I'm sort of going in the right direction of where I want to go. And obviously my carer has been there to help me make all the right decisions. And so, yeah, it's quite challenging, but also re re it will be rewarding at the end. The strength has come from my carer. It's, it's always come from there. And obviously my magic has been a backup side of that. And that's obviously gave me the confidence to go and talk to people. But I think my carer has been there all the way through. She's helped me. She's built my confidence right up. And she's just made me into a confident young adult to do basically whatever I want to do in life and push forward to make sure I get the best out of what I want out of life. I think some of the meetings, like say the social worker meetings and the PEP meetings, which stands for Personal um, Education Plan um, meeting, it's been a bit, some of them can be a bit pointless and some of them, in my case, it's been a bit, okay, do you really need to be here? And it can be a bit um, out, of, um, out of the question, like, do you actually really need to be here? But they sometimes have to hit deadlines and such. But I think for other people who are in care, I think they actually need these visits to actually be put onto the right track if they're going off track as such and be pushed and drive forward into the way they need to go. Um, that I think the PAP meetings have been uh, uh, great for that for in school because the social worker has to come along with the carer and along with whoever is the designated teacher for the school. I think they help in school because they help you look at where you're going wrong in school and help you look at where you're going right in school. So I think looking back, I think they actually did help me in a way which I needed them at times because at times, I mean, everyone goes downhill and everyone goes uphill. So they have helped me in that sense. But I think in other sense, do I really need to be here? You can just tell me, you know what I mean? Then having on my whole meeting going out of my lessons just to come to it. But I think for, say, other people, they do need it.